Well, howdy, everybody. Mike Vendetta here with Indiana Creek Prospecting and Pay Dirts, Black Mountains, Arizona Unsearched Pay Dirt Edition. I don't remember if I bought this or I wanted in a giveaway, but there's a minimum of two, uh, two quarter. Excuse me. There's a minimum of a quarter gram of gold added to this this bag here. I got some cool stickers, and I also got a new Diablo channel round or channel sticker from uh, Nine Finger Mining. I didn't have one of those, so thanks for that as well. So what do you say we get this uh, classified to uh, eighth inch mesh and separate out the two classifications and see what kind of gold we have inside. All right, here we are. So I figured this would be a good little tribute to our upcoming trip. If y'all don't know, uh, we got a big trip planned to Indiana later this week, flying out Thursday, and we got a whole week of prospecting up there all weekend. Got a bunch of buddies coming up there and meeting up with us. We're going to be sluicing and crevicing and doing all kinds of goodies out there. So I'm really excited about that. And I figured what better way to kick off that trip than to pan some Indiana Creek's dirt. Now this is Arizona, so this is Arizona Pater, so it's kind of made a full circle coming back around uh, to my part of town. Uh, up in the Black Mountains. I believe that's what it said, Black, right? Yeah, Black Mountains. Um, super red material looks very Arizona-esque uh, it looks like kind of like some hard rock area uh, nothing rounded too much or a dry creek bed that's what dry creek bed stuff looks like as well it's not perfectly rounded but uh, it is beaten up and tumbled quite a bit so there's all the plus eighth inch and we'll pan that off first Let's see if we got any nice little pieces of gold in there and then we'll go right into panning out the smaller stuff which I am assuming is gonna have quite a bit of magnetite knowing Arizona. So, let's get into it. Slide you over here. And we'll get you a nice little picture of that. How about that? How's this look? Yeah, there we go. Prospector L, what are you doing, bud? Are you booming? Booming rock? He's been breaking up some, some of this gold ore that I've had. For the last couple weeks trying to smash it into pieces so he's he's starting the fractures i don't know if uh, he's busted off much yet but figured i would be able to get some of that crushed up and smelted before the end of this month but that is not happening um, so we'll get it done sooner than later also uh i don't know if i'll be doing the patreon video uh tomorrow it is the first of the month i do have an opportunity to do that uh, or on Labor Day uh, once I'm back in town and uh, have some time to organize what I'm planning for that because uh, September I have not really wrapped my head around yet. Um, if you're unfamiliar, we do have a Patreon page uh, that helps this channel uh, do all the things that we're doing, pay to reviews, uh, smelting, melting metals, all kinds of good fun stuff. So without you guys, I really don't think I could be doing this indefinitely because uh, you know, there are costs associated with such. So I really do appreciate your guys' support and help. Um, every little bit goes a long way. Even for some small stuff, this is pretty heavy. Taking a good amount of force to... Uh, get it to pan off. Don't really think we should see too much in here with only having a quarter gram in the, in the bag, but you never know. Could get a surprise. Daddy. Yeah, bud. I'm not seeing anything in there. So we'll dump that into our tailings. What's up, Prospector L? You booming? Okay, all right, let's get the minus eighth inch into the pan. And we'll do this in a couple of different pan. sessions. My pan. Your pan? Yeah. You painting for gold? Yeah. yeah, you got the gold there. How many ounces did you find? Two, two. Two, three? Yeah. That's a good number. Twenty-three or just two or three? Two, three. Two, three. Two, three. That's a big. That's a big number, big boy. Yeah. Were you dredging or metal detecting? No, no, he said. 
Must have been dry washing. He does like that dry washer quite a bit. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. I'll uh, I'll show this off here in a little bit, but shout out to Brian up there, uh, Indiana Creek Prospecting and Paters. He sent me a freaking RPE sluice, Robinson Prospecting Equipment sluice. Um, I talked to him over the weekend because what I was, I had an idea, a crazy idea of trying to make it be able to work on my recirculatory sluice setup uh, with the water pump that I have, and um, the only problem that I found is I don't really have a way to hold it. I thought of, I tried dropping it in my little river sluice and just using that as like a frame to hold it, but it didn't really fit in that. And I kind of didn't like the idea of having a sluice in a sluice. It kind of defeats the purpose. And then, um, you know, me and the boys were kind of playing and I was just running some water down it with the hose and man, that thing needed a lot of water too. So I have an idea and that idea is to I, you know, I have some like, you know, 23 gallon totes, those gray totes that I use to collect the water from uh, the downstream side of the sluice. I think I might put one of those upstream and cut a little slot in it for the top of the RPE sluice to sit in. There's some gold showing right there. And have the one on the bottom with some sort of just, you know, base to, to secure the, the bottom in. Um, the only problem is it won't be super adjustable. It's not really made for that kind of a thing, but it, I thought it'd be really cool to see that thing running on, you know, in your backyard. Because uh, in the streams, I don't think it needs too, too much. You know, it has a nice funnel that kind of directs the water in. I'll show you guys here in a little bit. But I like it. it the, the ripples are deep. Makes you feel comfortable putting a bunch of material in there and let it uh, wash off. Uh, and even with my river sluice, I tend to just pour and go and usually don't have too much of a problem recovering some gold. I'm sure some is blown out, but I'll just do a little pan back here, see what kind of gold we're looking at. You can see some good color up there. Some nice pieces. I said, hey, wait, you're getting black sand, wait, what? Yeah, I know, and then I just dump it into another pan and uh, finish it. It's just faster. That's that's usually how I prospect out in the field because black sand separation is always the pain in everyone's existence uh, when it comes to prospecting. But, you know, as long as you suck it up, you know you got it. And then you can go back with your other equipment or your toys that you got that, you know, we all get to get rid of this black sand so we have nice clean gold. Culture Young's got some uh, mining magnets things he's working on. <sighs> Saw him do his dredging video, that was pretty neat. You can see some gold in there. Oh. Yep. Plus, then you like you have tailings to go through that you know might have some gold in it. Bye. Bye, bud. That was funny. Okay, and then we can just finish on this on. Put a little too much soap. Dang it. And this is. This isn't even the good soap. This is crappy, uh, free of everything soap. It's at bubbles, apparently. It's a nice bag so far. It's uh, actually not super difficult. Not as hard as I thought it was going to be yet. Um, you know, we have the rest of the material to go through still, but it's actually, I'd say, like, definitely not a, like, super beginner bag. There's some flower gold in here for sure. But it's a nice bag. Cool. 
happy with that. Got a little bit of rain trickling down. I don't know if you can hear that, but it is a beautiful sound. We do not get enough rain or moisture here. Especially as of late, the last few years have been super dry. A couple years ago, I can remember, I don't think it, uh, I don't think it rained. Might have been, a, within a year period, it didn't rain, I believe. I don't remember. Every, all those weather satellites and, uh, pickup stations are in different locations so they might have got it but where I live didn't see rain for like a year and that I've never seen that in all the years I've lived here and that's you know, pushing on 20 here near in the future at least we know we won't have any uh, gold floating away so if you get too much, uh, get too much soap going, like in those cyanide recovery methods, when they do the float tanks and stuff like that, they're using foam to get the gold up because it's so fine. Oh yeah, if you haven't uh, gone over to Nine Finger Mining, he's getting real close to 500 uh, subscribers on YouTube. Uh, and he's doing a big giveaway for that. So go check out Nine Finger Mining up in Alaska, 907. All the suds, man. All right, I'm seeing gold. Ooh, that's a pretty little smile right there. Look at that. I think we're getting well over a quarter gram on this bag.
That is loaded. Some finds down here that we missed. We'll get those in a second. Your flowers over. Alrighty. Get a little snuffer dump here. So we're gonna get this all cleaned up. To get get all the black sands out, dry it up, and show you a weight. Really fun bag. Been about 17 minute video so far. So from classification down is about gonna take at least 20 25 minutes and you know i was kind of blazing through that so got all that gold in there i'm saying that's well over uh well over over a quarter gram i don't know what that is it might be a piece of lead yeah it's lead or something not gold yeah, it's lead. But yeah, really cool bag. Dad. I'll be right there, bud. Look at all that gold. And we'll see uh, see what we come up with. Thanks for watching.